Welcome to the weekly teaching tip series. My name is Christina Moore from the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning at Oakland University. Every Monday, we publish a teaching tip on our website, oakland.edu slash teaching tips. And this is a very special video addition to the series. So today I'm talking with Felicita Arzu Carmichael, Assistant Professor of Depart in the Department of Writing and Rhetoric at Oakland University. And I'm talking with her student and collaborator, Mina Hannah Ketchell, a professional and digital writing major and the recipient of the prestigious Keeper of the Dream Award recently here at Oakland University. And so Felicita and I have known each other for a while. And while I appreciate many aspects of her research and her teaching work, I think the thing that has always stood out to me the most is that whenever I ask if she'd be willing to do something or do a presentation, she almost always asks if she can bring her students along and be active participants in that. And that is actually going to be the theme of this teaching tip. Um, Nina and Felicita will be talking about a current collaboration they're doing together and what advice they give to professors and students on cultivating these collaborations as really rich teaching and learning opportunities. So to start, Dr. Arzu Carmichael, tell us about how your teaching actively includes students, including collaborating with them on projects. Yeah, first of all, thank you so much, Christina, for this platform and for the space for Mina and I to have this dialogue with you. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, so my students are very active uh, participants in my teaching and wherever possible um, in my research as well. Uh, I think that's because one of the values that I have as a teacher uh, is based on the one of the pedagogical theorists that I follow, Paulo Freire. And so a lot of uh, Freire's work, he advocates for a kind of reciprocity uh, between teachers and students. And what this means is there's this reciprocal role where students learn from teachers and they teach teachers just as much as teachers learn and teach their students as well. So it's very reciprocal. Um, and in a lot of the theories that I'm interested in as an instructor, I'm always trying to identify ways that I can take the values um, and the ideologies that I subscribe to and put them into practice, right? And so what does that reciprocity look like for me um, as an instructor in my classroom um, and in my research as well? And so that's kind of where uh, this all got started for me and why I'm always interested in opportunities to collaborate with my students. Um, so really intentional about making space for that. But one of the other things that I'm really interested in, um, and this kind of started with uh, Judy Abelesser's work uh, over at Settle when she was a director. One of the things I really appreciated about Judy um, is that she always encouraged faculty to pursue the scholarship of teaching and learning. Um, and so this inquiry into student learning obviously can happen in a variety of ways um, for me when I invite my students to present with me, what that does is it takes a conversation that started um, within the classroom space into a different space, right? And so I'm able to inquire a lot more into my students' interests and a lot of uh, inquire into their learning, right? Kind of how they're grappling with the issues and conversations that we're having in class um, and what that looks like for them outside of the classroom. So in a way, it's it's my way of also kind of inquiring into this, the scholarship of teaching and learning, um, which also tells me a lot about my pedagogy. So I think this kind of goes back to what I mentioned earlier about this reciprocity. Um, I teach students, but my students also teach me um, quite a bit. So Mina, how would you then share your experience? I mean, you're hearing your professor talk about this intentional strategy. So what did that actually look like and feel like for you in the classroom? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for having us here, Christina. I think from my perspective, um, I first had Dr. Ozu Carmichael in writing 2060 back in uh, 2021. And um, I would say that this collaboration was really ignited from an opportunity of being a discussion leader um, in the classroom as a part of my grades. And um, I decided to 
lead a discussion on an article that was um, written by a scholar of color, and the content of that article was actually very relevant to the issues that were affecting me and uh, really interesting to me. And um, I decided to bring up the topic of microaggressions. Uh, and it was a very productive conversation with my classmates and Dr. Ezra Carmichael. But um, 14 weeks could only do so much to um, cover such intensive topic. Um, so I decided to investigate these issues in the work that I was doing in the classroom. And one, I would say the pivotal moment for me was deciding to write a paper, um, a federal paper titled How Are Writing Instructors Complicit in Why Master of English? And, um, you know, speaking of collaboration, uh, Dr. Ezra Carmichael actually encouraged all of us to seek publication. And that was very new to me because her class was my first, I would say, writing intensive class in the major. And I was really intrigued in the opportunity of seeking publication. And um, I wanted to explore that more with her. So we decided to extend that conversation beyond the classroom. And what happened was we actually, um, I asked her to, you know, help me to pursue publication in regard to that paper. And um, I would say the rest is history. And um, we had many conversations outside of the classroom um, for coffee. And um, a lot of our conversations from the classroom in regard to microaggressions and even my paper that explored the intersection between um, race, social justice and writing and how faculty and um, how faculty have a responsibility of um, being cognizant of that connection in their assessments and teaching. Um, and I would say that the opportunity came back uh, a few months ago, which was presented to me. Um, but once again, I think it's truly full circle to reflect back to that, um, to that representation that I saw myself in text and to sit here and talk about our work. That reminds me of another professor who spoke very similarly about always having anything he assigned as an opportunity to then share it out. That that was almost an expectation, although not required. And I think it, it came down to the point of, he got to the point of calling his, his student scholars um, very intentionally of saying like, you are doing the work of scholarship in this class if no one, even if no one sees it, although people should. Um, and I just, I haven't thought about that in a while, but that really reminded me of that. So I wanted to elaborate on that point because as a teaching tip, we, we wanna bring it, we wanna share stories, but also help other faculty and students put this into practice. So Felicita, could you say a little bit more about how you, encourage all of your students to publish, um, whether that's in a very specific scholarly outlet um, or if it's in other media modes and uh, outlets. Right. Um, you know, I, I before I answer that question, I love what you just said about referring or the professor that referred to students as student scholars. Um, you know, I think language is so powerful <laughs> as a rhetorician. Uh, you know, I study rhetoric, I study language. Um, and so I love that approach that that professor takes. Um, so I wanted to, to mention that. But yeah, I always encourage my students to, to publish. And one of the things that I'm always very cognizant of also is uh, being able to practice what I preach. And so as a writing instructor, we think of writing as a you know, process, right? It, there's a lot of processes that are involved in writing. And so that idea of, you know, inviting students to identify topics that they're interested in pursuing in the class, but then encouraging them to continue to explore those interests beyond the scope of my class, whether that's in, you know, one of the classes in their majors or, um, you know, a career that they're interested in, whatever the case may be, that invites me to demonstrate to students that writing really is a process. So the paper that you're writing for the 16-week course, it doesn't just end right there because the class is over. Um, 
So that's that's perhaps one of the, the main reasons why I encourage my students to, to seek publication, to continue to investigate, to continue to participate in these conversations that they select um, that are interesting, that are interests of theirs. Um, I think another part of that is, um, you know, I'm one of the associate editors of College English and I work with some amazing, I get to work with brilliant scholars in, in my department. Um, uh, under the leadership of Laurie Ostergaard. And so that idea of um, just kind of paying attention to the different um, spaces that exist in our field that are welcoming of um, emerging scholars, right? Or uh, student scholars, as you mentioned, um, to support them, to mentor them. Um, that's one of the things that I'm always also having conversations with about my students, identifying avenues that might be beautiful homes for their work. Um, or if they're not interested in publication, maybe it's a, you know, a local presentation on campus. I know Settle used to have these wonderful um, instructional fairs. It doesn't have to be a huge peer review journal um, or a national conference, uh, conference. It can be uh, something local that just provides the opportunity for them to continue that conversation. Yeah, and I think a lot of professors are enacting something similar, but I think they'll listen to this and it will be an aha of sorts. And they'll probably remember that that was when they started to feel like scholars themselves was when their professors invited them and said, I think you should continue with this work. What do you think of this avenue? Where do you want to see it go? So I think I think that's really the spark for a lot of the work that we do in academia. Um, so let's talk the specifics about your current collaboration, um, what form is taking place, if it has a home, where you're at in the process, or anything else about the specific project. Yeah, so um, the project started, so back in April uh, 2022, I got an invitation, an email invitation from a colleague in the field. Um, and someone who I had worked with uh, on a separate book project, um, but the scholar was uh, working on an edited collection with some other folks in the field, and this edited collection focuses on um, questions and lessons about leadership, leadership and support that were uh, revealed or that manifested during the pandemic. Um, and in this edited collection, they are specifically interested in the perspective of early career faculty. Um, and so I, I was very excited about the project and accepted. Um, one of the things that really captured my attention though was that emphasis on the word support. And that's because, you know, you can already imagine during the pandemic, there's there's so much, um, so many challenges that a lot of early career faculty and students, um, we all faced really in, in a variety of ways, but that's a concept that I had already been thinking of and kind of grappling with. Um, but what was also happening at the time, um, Amina mentioned that she was taking this class with me in fall 2021 and conversations that emerged in that class that we continued through the winter 2022 semester. So when I got that invitation, um, I was I immediately made connections to uh, some of the very, very important conversations Mina and I were having um, about support again. Um, but specifically about microaggressions and the kind of support that may, may or may not connect to those, right? And so mm -hmm. I immediately thought, what a wonderful opportunity for Mina and I to continue to have this dialogue um, in this space through this edited collection. So I reached out to Mina and I asked if she'd be interested in collaborating with me on this book chapter, uh, which she agreed to. And like she said, the rest was history. Um, so since May, 2022, we've been drafting this book chapter. Um, lots of drafting, lots of meetings and conversations, um, making connections between our um, experiences. Um, and big thanks to Professor Megan Schoen um, in the Department of Writing and Rhetoric, um, who has been so gracious with her time, giving us feedback on, on this dra um, draft as we're working on it. Still very early into the process, um, as most publications are, it takes quite a bit of time, but it's it's been a wonderful process collaborating with Mina on this. So Mina, did you want to add anything to, to anything that your professor said about this process and how it's felt for you? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's been a very um, surreal for me to draw on my experiences um, having been an ESL student in high school. 
And having been one of the few um, students of color in the major, at least in my meetings and classrooms, um, and I also was really grateful to be able to um, take my experiences um, in my student role at um, Oakland, being an embedded writing specialist who offers support in first year writing classes, and um, transform those experiences, both positive and negative, um, and transform them into critical lessons for affecting uh, positive social change. And I think it was um, it has been very uh, empowering to not only be able to put language to it, but also um, make sure that I can actually implement that same framework and implement the same act and uh, empower my own students. Um, you know, having that opportunity of, um, you know, offering my students support. Um, but I think to me, and I also really want to acknowledge that, um, Although some of it was both positive and negative, I was able to actually, um, um, you know, my, my Keeper of the Dream Scholarship Award win has definitely contributed in multiple ways. And I think this um, collaboration um, has tremendously, um, you know, impacted and contributed because I was able to um, draw scholarship on it. And I was also able to uh, empower my own students. Um, but I think what was interesting to me is I took those same um, frameworks and same um, concepts that I learned from class, from having um, 2060 and 384, and uh, make sure to apply it in our chapter. Yeah, and I want to add um, real quick to that. I, I love that Mina brought up the concept of empowerment because that's really central to this book chapter. Um, you know, the edited collection is about leadership and support. And through our conversations, we determined that that concept of empowerment, both how myself as a Black faculty, a junior faculty, have empowered myself or have been empowered by others. And Mina, um, as an undergraduate student, a student of color, likewise, how she has able to be empowered by others and empower herself. And so through our shared experiences, our conversations and connecting those um, through the many exciting scholarship that we've been reading in class and out of class, we've been able to, or we are still in progress of working through, okay, so what does this mean for a sense of empowerment for ourselves, because we are writing from our perspectives, but then also uh, recognizing that we are trying to, to prepare or to uh, share uh, lessons, right? For other faculty, for other junior faculty, for students, for program um, directors, that they might be able to identify ways um, of empowering and, and collaborating with students um, and, and working toward um, effecting change, as Nina said. And one thing that stuck out to me in your description of this collaboration is that it almost came out of a relationship that you two have been cultivating over time. Um, it, it's, it's not as if in the class itself, this call came out and you went to your students and said, there's this call who, you know, would anyone like to contribute, which of course would have been a fine and wonderful opportunity too, but you have been talking over time about your interests, where you want to go. It hasn't just been about publication, but about growth and empowerment. And then this call came up and you're in a practice of thinking of who, which student can I involve in this? And you thought of Nina if I understood all of that correctly. Um, so I think it it speaks to not only this transactional idea of, oh, I can tap into students and they can provide this assistance in developing my scholarship, but you have this rich network of students that you're always connected to. So when the opportunity arises, you're sensing, who can I talk to? Who can I bring in? This, this person would be perfect for this. So. I think that's a really important added piece. So with just the last couple of minutes to try and bring this into some first steps for faculty who want to have similar experiences, want to revisit how they bring in students as collaborators, um, what advice would both of you give, whether it's to professors or to students or to both, 
about how to engage in this similar practice and bring students in as collaborators. Um, so one thing comes to mind um, in regards to advice that I would give and uh, it relates to, so I have a, a, a strong commitment to OU's strategic goals, um, particularly goal one, student success, um, and goal two, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Much of my teaching, research, and service actually center um, DEI-related issues. So my advice to faculty kind of centers these two goals, um, one and four. Um, I think collaboration happens first by a deep listening. Uh, we have to listen intentionally, um, listen rhetorically, listen deeply to our students. Um, I think, you know, the first week of classes, most faculty probably ask our students to tell us a little bit about yourself. <laughs> you know, um, what, what's your major? What are you interested in? What do you do for hobbies? Um, whatever the case may be. Um, over the years, I've been very uh, intentional about, even though asking, asking my students those questions early into the semester, um, to come back to those, right? And so there's a lot that our students are comfortable revealing about themselves first early into the semester and being very mindful of who our students are throughout the course, even though um, when the semester starts, you know, we're equipped with our core syllabus and course objectives and our major minor projects. Um, but not everything in the course or everything in the semester can be planned. And so for me, um, kind of listening to who my students are, what they're comfortable revealing about themselves early into the semester and what they reveal about themselves as the semester progresses. Um, and then being very intentional and mindful about, okay, um, you know, are there opportunities that I can identify to support you in, in what your interests are? Or perhaps um, a lot of the students might also be a little unsure about what their interests might be, what their career goals might be, and that's okay as well. That's why right. they're taking all these exciting classes, right, to figure that out. Um, but uh, so there's a lot of there's a lot of mentoring also, I think, that needs to happen. Um, but I, I really appreciate what you mentioned earlier, uh, Christina, about so my kind of uh, approach to collaboration. It's not, you know, kind of seeking ways or opportunities that I can uh, benefit from from students work. But really, it's it's a kind of validation of validating my students in the classroom, um, recognizing who they are. Um, and making sure that even though they're in my class to study and practice writing rhetorically, who they are is also central to the work that they do, right? And I think if we're very mindful about that, it kind of makes collaboration a, a natural kind of easy thing that can emerge um, uh, with students. Nina, what advice would you give to professors, students, or both? Yeah, absolutely. So one advice I will I would give to instructors is to first trust your students and um, be open to learning from their students and knowing that your students bring a different yet unique perspective um, to their pedagogy, to their assessments, to their course design. And I have always found that Dr. Arzu Carmichael has always been actually interested in learning from her students. And um, I think a lot of instructors, unfortunately, maybe due to their background, uh, kind of um, confuse that um, power dynamic of um, authority of knowledge and having that um, authority of, you know, knowing, having that knowledge, which is amazing. But I think I would definitely tell them to be interested in learning about what your students are um, into, uh, their research interests. And if you can't always uh, collaborate with them, how can you connect them to uh, resources on campus or in the field that can help them reach those goals? Um, but I also want to say and acknowledge that, um, you know, opportunities like this for students, um, I, I guess I want to tell instructors that it opens doors for them beyond the classroom. You know, there's this kind of idea that you come to my classroom, I teach you, you get a grade and you leave. But how can we extend those conversations and reach uh, a broader community and a broader audience? And I think this uh, project is a prime example of doing that. But my advice to my um, fellow um, classmates, colleagues, and other students is to um, recognize that professors are actually there to um, hear your ideas and what you're interested in, and they're waiting for you to come to them and to um, be a geek and to talk about your research interests and to share with them um, the conversation that sparked interest and in that you were thinking about after class. Um, and also, I would definitely say, do not be afraid of advocating for research that 
maybe um, we don't have enough scholarship about. And um, I remember, you know, vivid conversation about uh, with Dr. Ozer Michael about me being a fierce advocate about linguistic justice. And at the time, I didn't have the language and the scholarship to articulate myself because I was so um, new in the field. But what was really cool about those conversations is that she was also eager and curious with me to investigate these issues, even if we both didn't have the same um, tools. Um, so, and I also would tell my, um, you know, I guess fellow colleagues is to um, say yes to opportunities, even when you feel like an imposter, even when you feel like you're so new to the major. Um, I, you know, I think at the time, and, and sure, I think I felt like I uh, perhaps um, didn't have the expertise, but I love the language that you use, Christina, about calling um, students scholars. Uh, I know, I know for me, when she first called me a scholar, what that did to me is it actually told me or it made me um, feel like I actually belong in the field. And what I have to bring is valid. And not only valid, is that it actually can take real place and we can actually um, we can actually have it in the field and put it into real action and practice. And I think this is, once again, this project is an example of that. So taking it beyond the classroom and sharing it with the field and, and the world, essentially. I want to come back to uh, Mina talking about trust and how important it is for faculty to trust their students, um, because I think that speaks to that idea of listening to who our students are. One of the things that I really love about Bell Hooks' work, for example, um, in Teaching to Tran Transgress, she talks about sharing personal narratives that really enhances our capacity to know. Um, is really an important aspect of um, centering students' voices. I know as faculty, we talk all the time about how important our students' perspectives are, how important their voices are. Um, but I think that's one way that we can really make sure that we're enacting those, those values, right? Those shared interests that we have. Um, and I also think back to uh, Mina's Keeper of the Dream Award um, and the ceremony uh, this year, the keynote speaker, Hill Harper gave such an amazing talk, a powerful talk where he reminded audiences um, about one of Dr. Martin Luther King's Jr.'s quote. And um, I remember the quote having something to do with um, mutual mutuality, right? A sense of mutuality and destiny that we're all connected in this mutual network. And I think if we start from that perspective, that we're all already connected by this mutual destiny, um, that's, that's one of the things I think that can foster collaboration with our students, right? And that makes this these opportunities um, for student success. Um, and that also invites students to investigate um, important um, socially just related questions that contribute to to our field but also contribute to to those specific to um, goals that I mentioned earlier so thank you Mina for bringing that up about trust yeah I I shouldn't I shouldn't be surprised at this but I know that we had this idea of discussing this collaboration and specifically this project and how it came about and how faculty can, can translate that same sort of collaboration. But I just love how this really got at the core of the relationships we have with students and, and why we're doing this in the first place. So that we're not trying to implement a strategy here, a good practice to do there, but we're really exploring what is at the core of that. So I'm, I'm really glad that that's what we're discussing because that really is the seed of who knows how many um, collaborations are to come and all the other things around those collaborations too, which is probably the reason why whenever I ask you about a project you're doing, you wanna involve your students because you are connected and you continue to cultivate those connections and create a community of learners, which is something we need to continually pay attention to and create that safe and encouraging environment. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Um, you know, I always tell my students when they enter my classroom, uh, if they leave knowing how to um, write a really strong paper, I would have failed them as an instructor because that's not that's not my sole purpose. You know, at the end of the day, I want them to be critical thinkers. Um, I love what you just said about community of learners. Um, I want them to find themselves in community, build community, and and really leave our institution better than better than how they came. So thank you so much for that, Christina. Thank you both so much for taking this time to share your experiences, your ideas, and just the wonderful work and achievements you've both enjoyed recently, and I know are on top of lots of other ones. So thank you so much for stopping by. Um, to see this and more, um, please visit the Settle Weekly Teaching Tips series at oakland.edu slash teaching tips. Thanks, everyone. Thanks to both of you. Thank you.